In Power Wheel 2015 R2, we've introduced a brand new machining strategy designed for long, thin, and deep channels. The strategy is called rib machining. So if I just hide this toolpath, zoom into our part, we can see the type of channels that we are looking at machining. They require either a form tool or quite a, a long tool in relation to its diameter. So in previous versions of Paramo, one method of machining these types of features was to create uh, a series of boundaries around those features, defining the rib channels. And then we could use a toolpath such as Constant Z to program a machining strategy for them. However, when I turn this strategy on, you can see the inefficiencies associated with it, mainly in the amount of lift moves. Also, the toolpad is not continual, it's very disjointed, and it's not going to really leave the best finish that we desire. So, with the brand new rib machining strategy, these inefficiencies have been removed, and also the user will experience a much simpler and easier process at clearly defining these rib features. So first of all, I'm just going to open up the strategy selector form. We now have a new section called ribs. And if I double click on rib machining, we'll be brought to our strategy form. So now that it is popped up, I'm just going to hide the constant uh, toolpath. And we can go ahead and start looking at how to machine these ribs. I'm just also going to deactivate the boundary. Okay, so for rib machining to work, we essentially need two things. We need a pattern which follows closely the center line. We need a pattern made up of a series of lines which run down the rib features. And we also need a set of surfaces which define the rib features. So we have two methods of using or creating the pattern and surfaces. If we have uh, quite a, a simple part or a suitable part, we can just simply create a pattern before we open up our machining strategy form. So I already have a pattern created like this that is designed to machine these two rib spans. So in this example here, I have a pattern made up of two straight lines which run down the span of the two rib channels. Now, these pattern lines do not need to be exactly on the center. Even if they are off by quite a bit, Power Mill will still be able to use it to recognize the associated surfaces. And then I also have a set of surfaces saved to this set here called ribs. However, if I do not have a pre-created pattern, or um, a pre-prepared set of surfaces, I can use a rib mode toolbar, which is built into the rib machining strategy form. So if I leave this pattern and the surfaces drop down blank, I can access the rib mode by clicking this icon here. So this will automatically shift me to a Z down view and will bring up uh, the rib mode toolbar. So there's two stages to this. The first is to create the pattern, and the second stage is to use that pattern to automatically find the surfaces defining the rib. So in my pattern creation, I have some basic curve creation tools. So what I really want are a few straight lines. So let me just turn off the existing pattern. So what we need to do is pick a start and end point for each rib channel. So to do this, I'm going to pick a little bit beyond the end of the rib. And again, I don't have to be centered on the rib channel. I can be left or right of the center line and Power Mill will essentially center it for me when it is automatically acquiring the surfaces. And then I just go to the end of the rib channel to choose my end point. And again, I just do the same for the second rib, which I want to machine. So if I pick any point along here, again, it doesn't have to be centered. And then scroll across to my end point and just click like so. I'm happy with that. 
if I needed to delete one of these segments, I could just select it and hit delete. I can also reverse the direction of each pattern segment. I can change the order of the segments and I can cut or split or merge some of the segments using these tools here. I can also access my full curve editor from this icon. So once I'm happy with my pattern, I can then move on to step two, which is acquiring the appropriate surfaces. So there are two ways to do this. I can manually select them by clicking here. I can select by color, level or set, or I can select with my mouse or I can use the automatic recognition icon. So if I click that, Paramo will automatically select the surfaces that make up the rib channel according to the pattern which I have defined. So something to point out here is that Powermill has a built-in safety buffer um, when it is automatically selecting the surfaces. So this is because if we had a rib um, in a quite detailed uh, mold part, for example, and the rib was somewhere in the center of it, uh, we would only want to select the rib surfaces. We would not want to select any surfaces beyond the rib. So what Paramil does is it buffers maybe 10 to 20% of the surfaces out. And all that means is I just have to re-select them once the automatic selection has taken place. So you can just see it was the final three or four surfaces at the end of this channel. I'm just going to check the other side where I just have to select three surfaces and it's the same for the rib going in the opposite direction. Okay, so now I'm happy with my surfaces. I can exit the rib mode by accepting those changes. So now I have a brand new pattern created and I have a brand new set of surfaces. So now I get to choose how I want to machine these surfaces. So first of all, I have two different styles. Now these are really suited uh, depending on what type of tool you have. So if I had a form tool which closely matches the geometry of the rib, then I might choose to machine down the center of the rib. If I was using a, a regular ball nose tool, for example, um, and the rib had some draft angles on it, I would then choose to machine the walls. So this will split the tool path where it machines the left and the right hand side of the rib separately. Uh, I can add in a clearance value to the top of the rib surface uh, and then my offset options are merge where the top profile and the bottom profile merge together. I have offset up where the bottom profile is offset to the highest Z height and then I also have floor only so this will only create one toolpath segment going along the bottom of the rib channel. Now with cut direction, I have climb, conventional, any, and I also have uphill and pattern. So if I was to choose uphill, this will create a tool path that avoids cutting moves where the Z height decreases. So this option uses both climb and conventional milling. And when you select the style of rib walls, like we have here with uphill, um, one wall is machined using climb milling and the other is machined using conventional milling. This is to ensure that the tool never makes a decreasing Z move. And then with pattern, uh, I would select this to create a toolpath that follows the direction of the actual pattern. So you can see here my pattern has directional arrows and selecting the cut directions pattern will mean my toolpath follows that direction. So if I was to choose to machine the rib walls, then again, one wall is machined using climb milling and the other one will be machined using conventional milling. This is to ensure that the tool will follow the direction of the pattern. Now, it is worth noting that with open channels, you should use this option to start machining from the open end of a channel in order to avoid any plunge moves. The final option I have is to machine with the tool taper angle. So if this is selected, then the 
tool simply machines the channel using its taper angle instead of using the draft angle of the channel. So you might want to use this option if the channels are not modeled accurately or if they do not need to be machined accurately or also if you have a form tool that matches the profile of the channel exactly you would use this option. You can also put in an angular tolerance value here. Okay, so those are all of my options and how to define the machining of my rib. So if I just close down this toolpath, I'm just going to show you what these will look like once they're calculated. So let me just deactivate my pattern. And I'm going to activate a toolpath which uses the uh, center of the rib and it's offsetting upwards. So here you can see straight toolpath going down the exact center of the rib. Um, this is using a form tool and it is also uh, an offset up style pattern. So what that means is that if there are any changes to the surface profile like we have here, we have a slight step, as the pattern approaches the top it is going to begin to split so in this example it's probably not ideal because we're creating a few extra moves for us so what I would do is probably use the merge option so if I just activate another toolpath which is the same it's the rib center using merge you can see that the top profile and the bottom profile merge together to produce these smooth continuous toolpath segments so if I was not using a form tool and if I wanted to machine the left and right side of the rib channel separately then I would choose the rib walls option so again I'll start off with an offset up style and you can see now that instead of a toolpath going down the center line we have two toolpaths per rib channel one on the left hand side and one on the right hand side and again using the offset up style when I approach any changes in the profile I get these discontinuities in the toolpath pattern so they will be removed if I use the walls merge and you can see it's a very smooth continuous toolpath it is obviously a much better improvement than using the old style of constant Z um, so where any channels intersect Paramil will ignore that intersection point essentially. So because we had our pattern going straight down this rib channel, Paramil will machine it straight down. If we wanted to machine around this corner, then we would have to create a pattern which starts at one side, goes towards the center point, and then goes up the other rib channel. This will ensure that it is machining around the corner. So the other option we had was uh, to machine the floor only. So I'm just going to copy one of these toolpaths. I'm going to activate it, open up its settings. Uh, if I recycle it and just change it to floor, and then I can change the offset option to floor only, and then calculate. So now the tool path is calculated, I can just rotate my model, zoom in to the intersection point where you can just see uh, a single line tool path machining the floor of the rib only. Okay, so just to recap on what the new rib machining strategy does, it allows the user to quickly define the rib surfaces by creating a pattern and then letting Paramil to automatically detect any surfaces based on that pattern. With that, we have several options available to us to control exactly how we want those features to be machined. This is perfectly ideal for any long, thin or deep channels using either a form tool or a standard cutting tool. It greatly improves the user experience when trying to cut these features by reducing the programming time and also massively increasing the efficiency of the machining strategy.